fine needle diatomy for corneal vascularization. Corneal angiogenesis occurs as a sequel to an insult to the cornea as it brings with it cells of immunity as well as repair and aids in flushing the toxins out. However, because these blood vessels are formed in haste in response to the situation, they are immature and leak lipid and the vessels also overstay their time. This ultimately results in loss of transparency, lipid keratopathy and immunogenicity of the cornea. The unseen enemy here is the lymphatics with their afferent and efferent arm emanating from the lymph nodes. The lymphatics police the antigens, mount immune response and lead to graft rejection. So we would like to get rid of the vessels as much as possible before any corneal transplant. We need to understand the pathogenesis of angiogenesis to be able to treat it. Corneal vascularization can be a response to inflammation like a PUK. The inflammation is at metabolic level due to hypoxia in contact lens use. It can occur as a healing response to an infection. Repair with conjunctivalization and fibrovascular panus formation happen in LSCD. Separation of stromal lamellae invites blood vessels in corneal edema. In hydrops, the vessels stay back, enmeshed in the fibrous repair of the break in the decimates membrane. However, in corneal decompensation with little or no inflammation, the vessels regress completely once the stroma becomes compact after endothelial keratoplasty. So among these clinical causes, inflammatory angiogenesis needs treatment of the cause like immunosuppression or contact lens cessation. LSCD warrants re-establishment of the limbal barrier. Corneal edema resolution itself causes vessels to abate. So, post-infectious keratitis vascularization is the predominant indication for vaso-exclusive treatment like FND. Showing some of the indications where FND has caused remarkable regression of vessels such as in cases of healed viral keratitis and lipid keratopathy. It is very important to document the vessels preoperatively and postoperatively in order to treat them and assess the outcome. Though there are sequential high resolution digital photography and semi automatic software options to highlight and collate the corneal neovascular areas, simple drawings in accordance with the quadrant and clock hour seem to be an efficient and least cumbersome method of documentation. Superficial vessels are documented as a tuft, deep vessels as straight lines, and ghost vessels as dotted black lines. Corneal neovascularization occurs in stages of latent phase, active neovascularization, mature vessel formation, and then regression. The treatment modalities, again, depend on the stage of angiogenesis as depicted. Topical steroids and anti-matrix metalloproteinases work in the pre-angiogenesis inflammatory phase. Anti-VEGFs in the stage of immature vessel formation, which needs VEGF. While once mature vessels are established, only vaso-occlusive treatments like CALP and FND will work. Any of these modalities employed in an inaccurate stage of disease will not provide benefit. FND is a good vaso-occlusive treatment in the stage of mature vessel formation as it is easy, cheap, targeted and safe with less collateral damage compared to CALP and ablates the afferent and efferent stable vessels equally. A fine needle inserted into the feeder vessels at the limbus occlude the vessel by application of a coagulating current through a unipolar diatomy unit under local anesthesia. This equally obliterates afferent and efferent vessels at varying corneal depths. There are complications such as microperforation during passing the needle, intracorneal hemorrhages, transient opacification of the cornea and striae that occur but are reversible. FND can stimulate further vascularization through secondary release of proangiogenic factors. Alternate methods of thermal cautery using electrolysis needle is described but additional data from studies are required. FND is described as inserting the needle into the lumen of the vessel. However, it works as good when placed just above or below the vessel. Also, with the intralumen approach, accidentally perforating the vessel can result in hemorrhage, obscuring the view for further treatment. The needle is placed perpendicular when a tuft of vessels are present and parallel in case of a single prominent vessel. Being mindful of the depth and direction is the key. 
intrastromal hemorrhage and stromal whitening are side effects encountered which show that the treatment is working and the recovery post procedure is good when should we avoid fnd in the presence of inflammation necrotic and spongy tissue where the blood vessel needs to be present for the healing process sudden occlusion of the vessel in these situations will result in necrosis or melt of the dependent tissue let us see a short video demonstrating the technique of fnd and emphasizing the salient points In summary, only monopolar cautery to be used. Too less heat will result in inadequacy of procedure. Too much cautery can cause immediate necrosis due to heat or delayed melt due to the sudden blood supply cut off. Best effect is seen at four months, beyond which recanalization can occur. This grid depicts pre-operative corneal vascularization, intra-operative fine needle diathermy, post-operative regression of blood vessels. and a clear penetrating keratoplasty graft thank you